So I've shot another haul video that was supposed to air today, a haul video on discontinued vintage classic fragrances. I'm going to move that up a week later, but I've got a haul video here today, a large, a massive haul video of fragrances that I've purchased on my travels recently, some from Japan, very couple of them, not very many of them from there, but many, many from uh, my recent trip to Paris for a week. So I know you guys enjoy haul videos. Find out about the fragrances that I just picked up during my travels coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's Sebastian. We're talking about a fragrance haul, fragrance haul video today. A lot of great fragrances, some designers here, and also a lot of niche brands as well. Some brands you might have not heard about, some maybe you have. If you're following me on Instagram, I do post about my certain finds and things like that as well. And uh, I wanted to, you know, do this video so you can find out what I've picked up. So let's get started with uh, a few fragrances that I bought from my trip to Japan. I was in Japan for three weeks approximately, visited Osaka, Tokyo, and Kyoto. Really fell in love with Kyoto. I thought that was uh, my, the highlight of my trip there, although Tokyo is also great. It's a huge huge city but not much perfume going on in Japan so there's a nose shop that I visited two different locations and I also visited the brand show layered even though I was gifted some fragrances which I won't feature in the haul video um, I fell in love with uh, one of the fragrances that I ended up buying uh, here from show layered it's called black from the 1945 collection are you guys familiar with this house? Those of you that live in Japan, if you do live there, go to their store. I think it's uh, actually, it's it doesn't really act like a store. It acts more like a workshop and uh, you know, you'll find out about it. But let me show you this amazing uh, fragrance, this amazing bottle, I should say. Uh, the fragrances are not that expensive. They're also not the most intense fragrances, but here is black, 1945 black. So this one, they were out of stock in uh, their store, so I had to go find it somewhere else. I had a friend find it who was also looking for a bottle as well, so she bought that for me and I paid her. So this is a very interesting, fruity, rubbery, kind of the texture, the black rubber, maybe, you know, black vines kind of an idea, but more fruity, rubbery, leathery, ambery fragrance. So that is show layered. 1945 collection black and the fact that they gave me some fragrances uh, another fragrance in this collection and I bought this one I'm going to do a video on the house so stay tuned for that so that was uh, purchased from a store that sells show layered fragrances and then uh, I bought this fragrance on my trip Celine's Cologne Celeste it was uh, from the Celine boutique in Tokyo on the Ginza in the Ginza area it's interesting how some fragrances in Japan have this uh, very interesting uh, stuff written on it. But this is a, a new fragrance from the House of Celine. It's basically an eau de cologne. It comes in a 250 ml bottle. And I haven't put in the, uh, the uh, sprayer in yet. And obviously this is very cologne style. Have you guys gotten your nose on this? Are you familiar with this house? This fragrance to me smells so classic. I absolutely love it. Reminds me of the uh, the colognes of yesteryear, but uh, in in more of a luxury made way kind of a thing. It doesn't smell like the, the the DNA of the the current fragrances that are in the house, like black tie, night clubbing, Don Paris, and many others. This to me just smells like a straightforward cologne splash. You could use it as a splash. You can add the sprayer and spray with it. I believe the fragrance also has a few other items that are in the same uh, collection. It's called Cologne Celeste from Celine. And they, I think they have a body, body lotion and a, a few other things that come in this particular smell. But those of you that like the you know fresh Eau de Cologne style fragrances should uh, check uh, this one out. Again, it doesn't smell like the other fragrances. There is a DNA of the other fragrances, this powdery, orris, vanillic, woody DNA that I don't find here. This is more of a fresh, lemony, eau de cologne style, uh, you know, fresh fragrance. So glad to have this one here. It's, Cel uh, Cel it's Celine Cologne Celeste. 
And then I bought a fragrance from a house that I hadn't discovered yet. I know about the house. I've been following them on Instagram. Never saw any of their fragrances anywhere. So when I visited No Shop, uh, No Shop is one of the largest retailers of uh, niche perfumery in Japan, I believe, as uh, that was the only shop I went to besides Show Layered. And also I visited uh, Japan or uh, Japan's um, uh, Dorsey. Dorsey Paris has a boutique in uh, Japan, in Tokyo. And so those of you that like to shop for perfumes, definitely go visit uh, the Dorsey Paris uh, boutique. Uh, which is in a really cool neighborhood with um, really great, um, you know, fashion and things like that. And I believe it's really close to the flagship or original Comme des Garçons store. So those of you that like to shop for fragrances and things like that, definitely uh, catch uh, Dorsey in that neighborhood. I'm forgetting the names of the neighborhoods, unfortunately. But uh, if you like Dorsey or you're curious about Dorsey, I have a video on the channel. And Dorsey Tokyo has a exclusive fragrance as well that's only sold in that boutique. But going back to No Shop, the brand I discovered at No Shop is Kerzon. Are you guys familiar with this? Kerzon is a brand I've been curious about. I know they have a lot of skincare and things like that. It's a French brand, but this fragrance I quite fell in love with out of the fragrances they had from Kerzon. That's the brand right here. This is Tuileries Palais Royale. Um, it's a lilac fragrance, by the way. Uh, I I'm obsessed with the smell of lilacs. This is actually, it does say, what does it say? It says fragrance mist. Unfortunately, it's very light, but it also was not that expensive. It, I think it cost me around 60 bucks, but the smell is super amazing. And it puts me in a spring garden, spring park with, uh, you know, kind of uh, the, the kind of spring flowers that are blooming in the air. So it was an instant love. It was very green and floral, but more like yellow purple flowers rather than this white floral bouquet but a really amazing smell of spring flowers and um, had to have it. It was really cold when I visited the, the No Shop in Japan and since this brand I hadn't discovered and of course very intrigued with the smell and also the price was not expensive so I had to get that. So that's all I actually bought in Japan. I only bought, well, yeah, three fragrances and I didn't do a lot of fragrance shopping there because I, I don't think fragrance is that, that important in Japan. I did buy some incense and things like that there as well. But let's move on to my haul in Paris. I was in Paris for a week and I did a lot of damage. I bought a lot of fragrances. Plus, I was there during the sales, solds. So there was a lot of sales going on. Even though I didn't get a lot of great deals on a lot of the fragrances, some I did. I should say, visiting Paris this time around, I noticed there's a lot of perfume shops popping up. Uh, I was there for the new store, BDK store, that opened up on the Rue Saint-Honoré. So I was invited to attend the, that event. I went and uh, I used it to, uh, to that trip to do some uh, appointments and things like that as well. But I also did a lot of shopping. And Rue Saint-Honoré has a lot of perfume shops now. Nishane is there. And I noticed that Molinard is there now too. Molinard was not there when I went there last year in, uh, when did I go? September, I was there in September. So Molinard has a shop there now. And I bought, I bought this. This is basically the same thing as Fig. It's Fig actually. As you can see, it says Fig right there. Uh, it's a basically a canister. When you buy this, it's less expensive. And I believe this is 250 ml versus 75 ml. This was like 130 euros. And so basically it's like three times or more than the 75 ml of the original fig. And basically when you buy this, you also get this and you get the, dropping that, you also get a little funnel. So you get this and the funnel, when you buy this, it's not pretty, obviously. And then you basically open this up and pour it in that bottle, the spray bottle that they give you. And so you have basically Fig, which is uh, this fragrance. It's one of my favorite fragrances. Fig is uh, pretty popular. It's this right here. So basically you have Fig and you can t 
you know, take it around with you. Since I already have a bottle and I didn't know what I wanted to buy, I wanted to buy one of these to show you guys. And if you ever are in Paris and you, you like the idea of Molinard fragrances, you can go to that store right on the Rue Saint Honoré, which is actually almost right next door to the Nishane boutique, by the way. So they have great fragrances. I'm a big fan of Molinard. And of course, uh, Secret Sucre is one of my favorite fragrances from that brand. They sell it there. And so that I wanted to have on hand here. And of course, like I said, you can fill this up. It's easy to fill up and you just basically take the fragrance with you anywhere you go. All right, so Hermes has a new flanker to the H24 series, Herbs Vives. Is that how you say it? Somebody said Herbs Wives, Hermes Wives, apparently when they saw the, the post I did. So this is the third flanker in the series of uh, H24 fragrances. This one and the previous one are Eau de Parfum, and then the original was Eau de Toilette. I tested this out and I did enjoy the smell. It smelled quite nice. To me, it was very similar and also different. There's definitely a fruitiness here, a juiciness about the fruitiness, but still vegetal, green, and very herbal. So this is the third flanker. I thought they would come up with an elixir or a parfum, but they're doing a different uh, kind of a flanker here. And this is Herbs Vives. You know, I think this is my favorite. I like that whole ice cold fruitiness that's in here. And uh, there's definitely very juicy quality. So there's a pear note. It's an ice cold note. So the fragrance wears very vegetal cold, herbal, green, and fruity. It's, it's really nice, actually. This is definitely a winner for me from the H24 series. But once again, it's not beastly. The series I find to be kind of lighter, not really intense. But as far as the smell goes, I think it smells great. And, the, the, you know, I, I was mentioning in another video recently that there's some hate for uh, Christine Nagel. I don't know why, but uh, I find... Her kind of similar to Jean-Claude Elena, even though Jean-Claude Elena has been around forever, but she's got this kind of a minimalistic approach to fragrances. Also, I should say, the new Oud fragrance from the Hermessence collection is launching soon. It comes in an eau de parfum concentration, not eau de toilette. I did get to smell it, and it did have its similar minimalistic qualities that Hermes is known for, but it smelled great. So hopefully, I'll be able to report back on that very soon. Uh, as I do enjoy some Hermes fragrances, and I think the Oud is going to be very popular. And I believe it's going to come to Bloomingdale's here in San Francisco, those of you that are in the market for the new Hermes fragrances. So I was able to pick up the new Tom Ford Oud Mineral in the Signature Collection. It's out everywhere in France, I noticed, but I was able to find a store, like a touristy store for perfumes, and I bought several fragrances there. Uh, then then you, when you buy two or three, they give you additional discounts, which was kind of great. It was like a Marionaud store. Those of you that live in uh, Paris, let me know if you frequent those stores. Uh, let me show you the new uh, Tom Ford Oud Mineral here. What do you guys think of the bottle? And have you guys gotten your nose on this one yet? I think it's currently exclusive somewhere here in the States. I'm not 100% sure but it was everywhere in uh, France, uh, including like uh, Printemps and uh, Galerie Lafayette and uh, places like that. But for me, this new version has a very greasy characteristic. I guess maybe uh, I, I was not a lover of the original. I kind of hated it actually. It, put me, it rubbed me the wrong way. I've gotten used to what I have now. This version seems a bit different. What do you guys think? I'll have to do a comparison, but that's Tom Ford's uh, Oud Mineral, the new launch from that house. I bought a few feminine f releases as well. Let me tell you what I bought. This new one from Chloe. It's Nomad Nuit de Egypt, this one right here. So I had read about this launching on Fragrantica, and I wanted to get my nose on it, and it's definitely really a pleasant offering from this house. This is the first Chloe fragrance I've ever bought. I have some vintage from the brand, from various vintage hauls I've done. But this is Nomad, Chloe Nomad, and the little tassels in a baggie or something. So let me tell you what I think about this one. It smelled really great and warm and spicy. I, don't, I know nothing about the collection personally. This one intrigued me. That's why I bought it after I smelled it. 
warm and spicy for sure. And there's some kind of floral notes in there to, to mix with the, the warm, spicy kind of ambery notes. It's sweet for sure. But really, really, I think it's a great job. I don't know who the perfumer is, but it smells like candy. There's something candy-like quality about it as well. So those of you that are familiar with Chloe fragrances, are you familiar with this particular collection? And have you gotten your nose on this new uh, fragrance from uh, no, uh, Chloe called Nomad Nuit de Egypt? This one right here, let me know. The other one I bought, and I'm not a fan of this collection, but this one intrigued me as well. And when I smelled it with a friend who lives in Paris, she and I both agreed that it was a great fragrance. And it was actually uh, discounted at Sephora, not the place where she and I smelled it. And I, was, I decided not to buy it there I thought to myself, I'm going to look for it somewhere else, and I did. It was 30% uh, off. So uh, it was 30% uh, off at Sephora. This is La Vias Belle Extra. So again, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of this collection. I've uh, discounted it and uh, thought it was not that great. But this Extra version, I think uh, they've done a great job uh, of this. I think this is Dominic Ropion and Anne Flippo who created this particular flanker. There's something irisy about it. It's got a powdery edge and it lightly, very, very lightly hints at the iris in something like Dior and Parfum. It's very makeup-y, but it's surrounded by this freshness. There's rose in here for sure and I feel like there's also violet. But this stuff is great. I actually wore this. It was not necessarily uber feminine, but still it's a feminine offering from the house. And uh, for... A woman's offering if you guys wear designer fragrances uh, La Vie Spell Le Extra is really really solid I think I think it smells really really wonderful so visiting a Marionaut store in Paris I noticed that there was a section of uber discounted items and I went through it and I, d I found three fragrances that I bought I like discounts when I see them so this is Le Couvent de Menimes Remember their vanilla way long ago, like 10 years ago, was very popular. It was an alternative to Spiritus Double Vanille. Well, this is a new collection and it was clearing, clearanced out. It was 70% off, uh, so it was around 30 euros for this 100 ml. So there was no tester to test it out, but I took a chance for 30 euros for 100 ml. I thought it was a good deal. This collection, I think, is over at uh, Lucky Scent. But I haven't bought a single fragrance from this series uh, since they redid their whole collection. Here's what the bottle looks like. This is called Kithnos. Sounds kind of Greek. Let's go ahead and smell. I don't know what I'm getting into. I didn't look it up, but 30 euros was a pretty good price for this. It smells peppery, kind of bright, but there's woods, spices for sure and aromatics. Maybe there's a bit of amber in the base as well because there is some sweetness but it smells like an herb garden with woods. Actually it's very aromatic as it's developing. Let me spray it one more time. It's a bit subdued but not too much. But lots of aromatics and herbs and maybe aromatic woods along with woods and spices. Um, yeah, so that's Kithnos from Le Couvent de Menimes. Let me know if anybody is familiar with this house and what your thoughts are on their fragrances. I, I, I just took a chance. I know I saw the collection at Marionade a while ago, but I think it was being cleared out. And then another one is Reminiscence's uh, Mimosa. It was uh, on clearance for 40% off. I'm a, I'm a deal shopper. And this, to me, they did have a tester. I smelled it and it was, you know, like spring mimosa flowers come to life. Do you guys enjoy mimosa flowers? And do you enjoy this brand? I know they've rebranded. Reminiscence has rebranded. This is their older bottle. Let's go ahead and smell real quick. So for me, mimosa flower does have a bit of an almondy edge. It does smell a bit like almonds but it's, it's a spring smell. So it's powdery, yellow comes to mind because it's a yellow flower. It's a pleasant, uh, feminine, powdery fragrance. I think a man can pull it off. So that's Mimosa from Reminiscence. And then finally, Eau de Givenchy by Givenchy. It was 30% off for 77 euros. 
I've been wanting this fragrance for a while. I take a chance at a, a discount. I've smelled this one and I think it's kind of similar to the Celine, but not quite. This is more orange blossomy. The other one seems a bit more greener and herbal rather than lots of orange blossom citruses. So, so here's Eau de Givenchy. I think uh, when Barney's was still here, they had, you know, this, uh, they, they were selling this. Yeah, this is an orange blossom balm. Those of you that are Middle Eastern that use orange blossom syrup uh, for cooking and things will be familiar with the way this smells because it reminds me of uh, the orange bl blossom syrup that we have in the Middle East. Anyway, Eau de Givenchy from Givenchy. So I went to the Astier de Villat store and I bought another fragrance from this house. So Astier de Villat has some of the most amazing uh, plateware. Um, one of the most amazing places. If you ever get a chance to go, please go because uh, ceramics, they're, they're, they're known for ceramics. And they do have a collection of fragrances and this one is called Mantilla Jolie. I hope that's uh, pronounced correctly. Anyway, Mantilla Jolie is this one. I bought Le Nuit last year. Now I have Mantilla Jolie. The juice is the very most interesting color of blue-gray, kind of smoky. Let me know if you're familiar with uh, this particular house. Ooh, this is so good. Green and herbal with a bit of a mintiness. Not a bit, there's a lot of mint here. It's almost like putting a lot of mint in water and letting it soak in that smell of the water and the mint together. Green and herbal. There's a bit of a cucumber-like watery quality, although it smells watery. And the, the, the picture I was trying to paint with the mint soaking in water comes to mind. And there's also citruses as well. So this is very fresh. Monte la Jolie from the house of Astier de Villat. Let me know. Again, if you go to Paris, please visit that store. Man, that the place is amazing. It's a tiny little, tiny little hole in the wall and they have the most amazing things there. Okay, moving on to the house of Maison Margiela. I wasn't able to find a bottle of From the Garden. I don't know. I looked around everywhere and none of the stores had From the Garden, but I did end up finding Untitled Low, which... Untitled is so difficult to find lately, but Untitled Low is available. I've never um, got my nose on Untitled Low, but uh, this uh, I'm a fan of the original Untitled, which was the first fragrance. And now it seems like, although I think this is how the Untitled was as well, kind of similar to the replica line. It seems to be a lighter take on the original, which was a Galban and Bomb, which kind of reminded me of Chanel number no. 19. So I believe Untitled was the first fragrance from uh, Maison Margiela, and this is Untitled Low, followed up with it. Who knows? So a lot of you were asking me about uh, Frederick Mall's Synthetic Nature, which originally was called Synthetic Jungle. This is Synthetic Nature. I bought it from... Gallery Lafayette, and um, I think the fragrance is very similar. They're identical. There's no change to them. I'll have to do a side-by-side -side comparison, but to me, they didn't have any uh, differences between the two. And I don't know why the name has changed. The name has changed. Is it because of Kenzo? That's the rumor. Everybody is saying Kenzo has the name Jungle for their fragrances, and so Estee Lauder or LVMH had to... I guess some kind of a, a uh, I don't know, something happened legally and so they had to change. That's the rumor I'm hearing mostly, but there could be another reason. I personally don't like the name Synthetic Nature. I prefer Synthetic Jungle. But I'm not going to smell this one on camera, but it is, it's basically this green garden vegetal come to life with uh, the, and there's floral notes in there, green floral notes, uh, kind of reminiscent of something like L'Ombre Don Low, but different. Uh, it's one of my favorite fragrances from, Frederick Mall, and uh, with Synthetic Jungle coming out in 21, I believe. And then we had Uncut Gem, which I didn't really care for. I felt like it was overpriced. Decent fragrance, just overpriced, not worth the money. And then um, Heaven Can Wait has been a dud. Smells great, but bad performance. But still, I think Synthetic uh, Jungle Nature still is a favorite uh, of mine. Uh, and it's a bummer with the name change, unfortunately. 
So are you guys familiar with Fragonard? I've mentioned Molinard and now we've got Fragonard. Uh, there are three perfumeries in the town of Grasse, a city of Grasse, that have been there forever. So there's Fragonard, Molinard, and Gallimard. So now, I mentioned Molinard has a store on the Rue Saint-Honoré, but around that Rue Saint-Honoré, although more closer to the Opera, Opera Garnier, there's multiple locations for Fragonard. So I've been a fan of Fragonard, and I ended up buying a collection of fragrances in a promotion. I should show you. So I gave my mom a bottle of this uh, like 15 years ago, Diamant. It's kind of earthy, patchouli, and maybe reminiscent of something like Angel and Coco Mademoiselle together. So there's two bottles of it there. One goes to my mom when I see her. But the other four are for me and the studio here for when people come in. But Diamant, let's go ahead and quickly smell. The thing is, if you ever go to Paris, you can do the, the museum. It's a free museum tour of Fragonard, and basically you end up in a store after the tour, and uh, they've got their products there to purchase. And so, But this is very earthy. It seems a little different than when I remember. It seemed a little more potent, but uh, it smells great. If you like Angel and or Coco Mademoiselle, you should get your nose on Fragonard's uh, Diamant. Then we've got Rose Lavande, this one right here. Rose Lavande, basically what the name says, Rose and Lavender. So it's a floral herbal aromatic combo. Oh, definitely. Seems like on the strip, the rose is more pronounced. But wow, that smells really great. I'd like to wear that. It smells very fresh and spring-like. Yeah, with all those uh, herbs blooming and Roses blooming. So this is Etoile. To me, Etoile... I don't know why I bought this, but it smelled great when I was testing them. There's a whole bunch of these. Uh, if you buy them individually, it's more. You get a big discount when you buy the, the big kit. Uh, but I've got to look up the, the notes of Etoile. I, Etoile. I think it was... Very citrusy and fresh and musky. Finally, Grenade Pivoine. Pivoine is peony. Definitely the very, very peony forward, but also a bit rosy. Those of you, there's, there's watery touches in here as well. Like water, ozonic touches. Yeah, these are selected by me. I decided to buy them for myself and, of course, one gift for my mom. But the reason I walked into Fragonard is because I had read on Fragrantica that uh, the year... Oh, um, I should say before I do that, they, they do give you these little boxes if you buy the kit and you can put the fragrance in there. But the problem is there's no, no protection in here, so the bottle is going to just float around. So that was kind of a bummer. But also, if you buy the five, you get these five atomizers, so you can spritz them inside the atomizers and um, take them with you rather than carrying the, the big bottle. So there's, uh, these do say Fragonard on them. But the reason I went into the Fragonard store is because of this, because apparently it's the year of the lilac for them. Right there, lilas. So this was 25 euros for this bottle, 50 ml. Who's a fan of lilacs and fragrances? I absolutely love them. My favorite lilac fragrance, Lilac a Day from Wilhelm, has been discontinued. And it's basically a... It's reminiscent of the Ise Miyake lilac fragrance. Uh, what was it called? Uh, a Drop the Ise. So it's got this almondy edge. And it's interesting, they always add almonds against the, I don't know, not always add them, but I smell an almondy touch in fragrances that feature lilacs. And this one definitely has it. It's very fresh. It's an eau de toilette. It smells like spring. And it's a 20, 24 or 25 euros. And I think, I'm 99% sure that Fragonard does ship to the USA. So you can order from their website. And according to my, the lady I spoke to 
at Fragonard, they also ship to the USA. So those of you that are looking for fragrances from those uh, houses, definitely, uh, you know, go to their website and see if they do ship 100%. So I had to visit Javoy. Of course, I always go there when I visit France and ended up buying four fragrances at Javoy. I went there mostly for these two fragrances, Gozo Special Edition, and then also Roberto Greco's Rack. So I had to buy those two. And um, I also noticed that there was a fragrance from Liquid Imaginaires that is discontinued called Peau de Bet. And they had their last bottle at Javoy. I bought that. And then I, I noticed this fragrance called Odejo. This is apparently part of uh, eccentric molecules. So I wasn't really 100% sure about that. But I enjoyed that scent, so I ended up buying that. So I bought these four bottles at Javoy. And I'll show you Gozo Special Edition. I was hoping for the 100 ml, but the 100 ml is sold out. I still don't have any 100 ml bottles from Jeroboam, but Jeroboam's Gozo has become a favorite of mine. I wasn't a big fan of it when I first um, reviewed it, but it's grown on me quite a bit. Here is the special edition Gozo. Hopefully soon I'll be able to get a 100 ml from this uh, brand because I, I like their bottles. And I'm glad I have this as a collector's item. This is Gozo Special Edition. I think that's what it's called. Lab Edition is what it's called, actually. It says Lab Edition right there. Let me know if you're a fan of Gozo from the house. So, Roberto Greco's Rack. I've been wanting a bottle of this one for a long time. I had the sample quite a long time ago. I knew it was coming out. I have the two other fragrances. They're very limited edition fragrances. This is created by Christopher Sheldrake, who has created so many fragrances for uh, the House of Serge Lutens, and this is the bottle for Rack. Are you guys familiar with this? I absolutely love this bottle. If I had a fragrance house, this would be how the bottle would look. Well, not necessarily exactly. I don't want to copy it. This is so good. Musky. Oh, man. This is very, very vintage. Very. And I think it's a great, great piece of work. I love, I love the fragrances of this house, although I preferred the first one, Oyer, more than the second one. Uh, but back to this rack, I think rack is my favorite. Um, there is a book lit that comes with, with uh, the actual fragrance. There's some interesting images in there. Anyway, let me know if you've gotten your nose on this. These, this, this fragrance line, they're all very limited edition fragrances. So if you don't buy them, they do run out. I believe Oyer, the first one, is sold out. So uh, go catch my video on the house. I've, there's two videos on that house. Let's try Peau de Bet. Apparently this is discontinued. But apparently it's musky and animalic, which is... Uh, I smelled it in the store, and I found out it's discontinued in the last bottle. I had to have this one, uh, and uh, I do enjoy this line. Are you guys familiar with this line? Po de bet, po beast, beast skin. Po is skin, I believe. Mmm, yeah. It's kind of uh, animalic, but not like over the top animalic wearable just like rack it's wearable it's tolerable but those of you that don't like animalics you're not going to like this one this is uh, for me tolerable really really gorgeous love it um, glad to have this one i'll have to present it in a video of animalic fragrances recently something really bad came up with uh, one of my videos i had to t um, take down some of my animalic fragrance uh, videos, but I'll have to get into that later. And then we've got Odejo. Don't know anything about this, but apparently they told me it's part of Eccentric Molecules uh, collection of fragrances. Are you guys familiar with that? It was a very green fragrance, but unfortunately the color is this. It's an eau de toilette. Look at that. Colors are nice. And this is Odejo, and see, in, in here you can see the green, and I thought, every, all along I was smelling green, and I had to ask them, are you guys selling me the correct fragrance? Because green and uh, this kind of um, 
fuchsia kind of uh, orange thing. Uh, I, I, they said they only have one fragrance. This is correct. I'm like, okay, let's see if I can spray this. It's very fresh and green, almost um, herbal, little fruity, like green fruits rather than, you know, ripe, sunny fruits. But um, it's like a interesting cocktail also, like it does have a bit of a smell of a cocktail. Can't get the box out now. Anyway, I'll put that in later. So that was my haul at uh, Javoy. So this is the fragrance I've been wanting to buy. I smelled it at Harrods and I didn't buy it at Harrods when I went to Harrods in September. From the house Kareen Reutfeld. This is a fragrance called Kareen, uh, created by Dominic Ropion. Now, I've sampled the fragrances of this house. I haven't really gotten any of the fragrances from this house and there are a few that I like. This is the one that I really fell in love with. It's a patchouli floral combo. I think it's jasmine. Uh, and, and it's a great job by Mr. Dominic Ropion. Here's what it smells, uh, looks like, not smells like, Kareen. So let me know if you're familiar with this house and what do you think about the fragrances? Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is really sexy. There's a fragrance by Bulgari in the men's collection that features Tigar, also patchouli and jasmine. Perhaps they might have sort of similarities, but I, before I bought that, I'm, I'm buying this one because, well, bought it already. I really enjoy the smell. Soon I'll have the other one as well from um, Bulgari, but uh, let me know if you know Kareen Reutfeld. She used to be an editor for Vogue magazine, I believe, but she does have a fragrance collection of men, men's names. One of them is Sebastian. Um, which I like. There's also Lawrence. I think that says Lawrence. And then the latest fragrance of this line is called Forgive Me. Anyway, those are them. And then, uh, of course, this was coming out soon and it's finally out. Benjoin Bohème has been moved into the, uh, the regular collection of fragrances from uh, Diptyque. Uh, and I have been mentioning that this is happening, it's going to happen. Those of you that were wanting the original bottle of Diptyque Spongebob Boy, and hopefully you got it. I posted about it before I went to Japan that there were a few bottles left here in San Francisco uh, at the Diptyque Boutique, so I don't, I don't know if there's any around anymore. But I think what happened was Benjamin Bohem came out in a collection that had a lot of other fragrances, and then basically the only successful one there was Benjamin Bohem, maybe because I've been hyping it all along. I love that fragrance. And so they discontinued everything. They kept Benjamin Bohem, and there was an uncertainty about Benjamin Bohem. So basically what happened was, since that collection was mostly discontinued, except for Benjamin Bohem, they decided to move Benjamin Bohem into the this kind of gold-plated collection, the higher-end collection from the Diptyque's Eau de Parfum fragrances, which are the ones in the, the black rimmed bottles. So they didn't want to keep that one bottle by itself. It was very expensive to produce. This is what I'm, uh, you know, speculating happened with this. I don't know, 100%. And so they added it into this collection. And so uh, I think, uh, well, I think what, what happened is the price does seem higher now because it came in a 100 ml bottle for around the same price. Now it's a 75 ml bottle for around the same price. But when I sampled it at the uh, Gallery Lafayette where I bought this, I did notice there was a slight difference with the smell. I'm gonna have to, now that I'm smelling it, it doesn't smell different. I'm going to have to test them side by side. I think there's maybe some minor changes, but perhaps it could be a new batch of perfume, I, I don't know. But it smells a bit different, a bit similar, mostly similar, I should say, not a bit similar. But that is Benjamin Bohem. Let me know if you're a fan of uh, Benjamin Bohem. And that is uh, second to the last fragrance. And I'll show you a few more or one more. So Louis Vuitton's fragrances in France are the least expensive, especially if you buy them from Europe. So I ended up buying Myriad. In the collection that features the um, these big tops that are uh, you know created or designed by Frank Gehry, so this is the first time I'm buying a fragrance in this extracts collection. It's Extra de Parfum, 
And this is how the box looks. And this is Myriad. Who's a fan of Myriad? Let me know. Myriad is kind of a oud fragrance. It does have some funk. There's some uh, funky animalics in there. Uh, rose for sure. Oud for sure. But it does have the DNA of Louis Vuitton. Anyway, that's what the bottle cap looks like. And then finally, the last fragrance is Symphony. So Symphony is also part of the extracts collection from Louis Vuitton. These two are created by Jacques Cavalier, by the way. He works at uh, Louis Vuitton. And also, there's a book that's coming up by Louis Vuitton. I've been wanting to get my hands on it while I was there. I didn't know where. But Symphony has a similar cap, obviously. And I don't remember what the notes in Symphony were. But fruity and fresh. They seem like, these fragrances seem like they're very fresh. So extracts, are they going to perform like extracts? How concentrated are these? Especially this one, not the Oud one, not Myriad. But uh, Symphony seems very fresh, even though it says it's a, an extract. Anyway, that was my haul. Lots of fragrances here, long video. Let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. Let me know what you guys have been picking up lately. Which fragrances have you purchased? Uh, again, uh, these were stuff that I've been wanting to buy. There's some really great fragrances here and some great discounts that I discovered. And then, of course, I will report back on Synthetic Nature versus Synthetic Jungle, Diptyques, Benjoin Bohème Original versus the new uh, in future videos. But let me know which fragrances you want me to review in this uh, video. Um, put a comment down below so I can find out. But either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Okay, I can't believe I forgot to feature this one fragrance in the fragrance haul video. It's sitting right in front of me, but with all the other fragrances, it got covered up. So I did end up buying one bottle of uh, a new fragrance from the house of Christian Dior, Dior Privé collection. And it's the latest fragrance created by Francis Kirkjian for Dior, the house of Dior. Can you guess what it is? That fragrance is New Look. I did a quick video on this over the holidays and it was from a sample and in that video, I said it smells quite fresh. I thought it was citruses, but it turned out to be aldehydes. And then also I said it's uh, smoky with incense. And definitely there's uh, incense in this fragrance. So this is now the second Privé collection fragrance that Francis Crookchen did as a perfumer at Dior. He's actually created a few others when uh, he wasn't perfumer and from some time ago. But this is New Look. It's not New Look 1947 anymore, but it's New Look. And let me go ahead and smell it on camera for you once again. Not once again in this video, but once again on camera compared to the last one. This does smell like church and aldehydes. Very smoky, resinous, and also fresh. There's an airiness about it, and it's created from the aldehydes. So the brand, uh, this Privé collection, was missing something like this. And so now it's existing. But sadly, they had to discontinue New Look 1947 and uh, launch New Look. Those of you that have gotten your nose on New Look, let me know if you are a fan of it. Uh, do you have a bottle? What do you think about it? Let me know. Put a comment down. And I bought this from the Dior Privé Fragrances Boutique on the Rue Saint-Honoré, which, if you heard the, the video earlier, I mentioned there's all the perfume shops there. This boutique has been there for quite some time. And of course now, along with many others, there's so much perfume to be found on the Rue Saint-Honoré in Paris. So if you end up going to Paris, definitely go to the Rue Saint-Honoré. Luxury shops and lots of perfume, lots of perfume there. 
So uh, I know a woman that works there that I communicate with all the time that I go there. So just some terrible or bad news, I should say. All of the older Dior Privé fragrances that we're selling at the boutiques in France are discontinued. Mitza, Vetiver, Leather Oud, all of those original, original fragrances from Dior Privé are no longer being made. And the, the, the fragrance uh, a lot of you were mentioning that I mentioned it was discontinued here in the States also is discontinued, and it's Feb Delicious. Feb Delicious is discontinued, and it's no longer part of the original line. And so now it's kind of like in the back, you would have to ask for it, even in France. It's no longer part of the original collection. So that is most likely going to get the axe as well. Unfortunately, if you're a fan of Feb Delicious, get yourself a bottle. But it seems like we're getting away from Tonka because also Guerlain has now discontinued Tonka Imperial. I'll do a video about this later. I'm going to hope to get a bottle of Tonka Imperial. I mean, I have one, but as a backup, I should have another. Although, I should have bought it probably in France because everything is so much cheaper compared to here, but I uh, didn't have the room. But either way, thanks so much for tuning in today. Stay tuned for another video tomorrow. Bye-bye.